the war will finish. So uh, I prepare a couple of slides just to share how Ukrainian fintech ecosystem looks like, and then we can discuss what challenges and mainly, uh, I think, focus in opportunities that um, we could have just in cooperation with Ukrainian fintech. So, um, Ukrainian fintech and fintech is very global uh, like industry, so it's very connected with what's happened around the globe. And we see that fintech booming year to year around the globe and the same tendency we have in different parts of the world. So, uh, fintech have more than 158 unicorns in last year. So, a lot of companies starting um, providing CBDC for local governments. So, Neobank are booming. So, digital assets are booming. And even new terms that we have last year, like called metaverse, start um, to be filled of providing some digital financial services. So, and uh, how is Ukrainian fintech ecosystem looks like in this uh, dynamic uh, world picture? So, uh, as I mentioned, each year we do a huge research uh, with help of uh, international financial cooperation, with cooperation of National Bank of Ukraine, with cooperation of Ministry of Digital Transformation, Ukrainian Startup Fund. We do research uh, how startups behave. Uh, how uh, the structure looks like, what uh, products they provide, what the target market, their needs, and like uh, some fears if they have it. So, uh, Ukrainian fintechs in number, just to start the picture, uh, Ukraine is like 49 place in Global Innovation Index, 47 place in digital quality life at the world. Uh, we have more than 200 fintech companies that present at the market. Some of them participate of catalog, less numbers are not participating. We are 48 in um, global fintech ecosystem ranking and in eighth place in Europe from technical skills. So Ukraine historically have very strong mathematical university background and it's helped Ukrainian IT to do some uh, complicated things for outsourcing and for products. So, uh, back to the catalog, uh, we see, so Ukraine was hit by COVID in the last two years as all other countries, but due to FinTech, it's play like good, good thing and 20% um, of um, FinTechs that we ask have grown the customer base due to pandemic and uh, 23 of these FinTechs was grow of profits during the pandemic. If we speak about um, how the normal Ukrainian fintechs looks like, so half of these fintechs is uh, pretty small teams up to 10 or 25 numbers of people inside the team. So it means that they are not uh, over uh, headed with uh, staff. They know how to do products with small teams. Uh, if you back to the um, uh, terms of financial things, so 73% of this company passed the break-even point and it's very good um, KPI that we could observe around the globe. Uh, it's linked to the lack of venture finance at the market, but, but it's still a very good uh, numbers. So if, if we speak about the stage of Ukrainian fintechs uh, company, it's uh, on the level of development. Uh, most of company in focus it in scaling businesses like 52% and mature economies like 30% of uh, all our research and fintech catalog. Only 3% is like problem solution feed, but I think it's more due to pandemic. So after the pandemic, we expect it to um, have more numbers and new ideas that come to the market. So, and uh, as I mentioned, uh, we have pretty skilled staff and the markets that work for Ukrainian fintech and the proof of this is that we have more than 70 R&D centers of different uh, big tech and fintech companies based in Ukraine. It's Google, Revolut, Reddit, Rakuten and others. So also Vice have the, uh, had before the war the r and um, center in Ukraine. So we force uh, in place Ukrainian uh, in uh, developers rank for IT companies 
and uh, DAX called Ukraine as IT offshore for Eastern Europe. I don't like this world of offshore, but now the legislation are changing, so I think it could have some like reason to cooperate with Ukrainian IT and fintech companies. So if you back to some like geographic picture, so here we have some like systematic uh, map of Ukraine. So before the war, mostly of fintech was focused in Kiev. Uh, it's, so there are some reasons because all the financial operation and center, all headquarters of banks was in Kiev. So uh, if we see the map of war, we will put on this map, we will see that directly a heated uh, eastern part of Europe of the war and the fintech cluster and um, Kiev region was heated last 40 days. Um, so a lot of people moved to western part of Ukraine or just some of them abroad. So now most of um, fintechs focus it in Lviv region uh, district and some other like smaller cities and um, back into the business. So Ukraine uh, fintech companies uh, don't have any like specific business models that operate at the market. So they try different, so we, we could observe different business models that they know how to deal with, but the most popular was like transaction fee or some subscription uh, fees. And um, the main trend before the war that companies tried to sell and providers tried to sell uh, products or white label products to the market, but don't sell the out stuff. So only big IT companies that have FinTech uh, like chapters uh, sell this uh, programmers, but fintech, like poor fintech, they just sell the products. So back to target audience, uh, Ukrainian fintech don't have like direct specifics that try to serve different segments, but uh, mostly is like trend of last three years, I think, uh, more than half of Ukrainian fintech was focused to feed the needs of uh, private individuals and small and medium business and like main uh, segments in terms of like digital um, finance, digital lending. And 37 of responders said that the products primary focus to solve some like problems or inconvenience that banks or e-commerce has. So uh, back into how Ukrainian fintechs was uh, fund, uh, funding and how they fund funds. So at the beginning, it was story of 3F, as we joke, like friends, family as fools, but uh, in a couple of years, so it's still like 66% is like personal funding of the startups, 18% uh, it's like a private investor and all other types of finances just start to come to the market. So I also want to mention a um, big role that government tried to uh, play in fields of financing innovation startups before the war started. So Ukraine have Ukrainian Startup Fund, it's a government entity, and they support of free of equity grants to innovative startups. And this activity was pretty popular before the war. And also venture capital tried to fund the way how they can enter the Ukrainian market. It's more question was for the legal framework, but uh, we as the market and our donors and partners working in some right legislation framework to help uh, invite, uh, invite more venture funds and private investors to Ukrainian market just to help to support this. And when we ask Ukrainian fintech startups uh, what's the expectation to attract an investment in uh, like next year? So uh, the main answer was like private investors, 32%, venture capital funds, 27 and personal funds and still 18% in this agenda. So if you back to structure how Ukrainian fintech looks like, so uh, we have different sub-segments um, of um, fintech um, industry and the main popular was, I think it's in all this region, it started like this, it was like payments and technology and infrastructure, and it was linked to the, this, uh, that we have 
some like question with financial inclusion in the market a couple of years ago and fintech it was the one and only way to provide this financial inclusion to the market to help people have better access to finance and this is why all this like technology and payments serve like half of the fintech um, sub industries so personal consumer lending was also pretty popular because the internet coverage was uh, developing a strong last years in ukraine so smartphone coverage uh, pretty good like up to 70 percent so it's like ideal channel to do the digital lending so a lot of fintechs was focused in this sphere and we have pretty strong company in this like segments in ukraine also legal tech uh, start to booming like a global trend and ukraine has the same trend in terms of uh, legislation start to be a little bit complicated and more developed, so it will need to uh, IT solution to track it. So if, uh, if we speak how Ukrainian fintechs cooperate in foreign market, uh, we could find that 63% of Ukrainian fintech company work for internal market and only 15% of them work with EU region, 7% in United States, and 6 work with this region. So, but in this 63% that work um, only in Ukrainian market, we find that 79 um, plan to go to foreign market, and this is like huge potential of cooperation with other market and EU specifically. And um, when we ask them what the main problem for they see that operate in local market, we find this like a legal restriction, but we have a huge progress last year in legal framework in financial sectors. So it was open banking, open IP law adopted. It's like new payment laws that start operating in Ukraine and it show a huge potential of cooperation in terms of open banking and with um, germanization, our legislation with EU legislation. So we have the Ukrainian analog of second payment director of European Union. So we see here a huge um, like space for cooperation or also in legal sphere um, just to have this no limit uh, usage of the digital finance solution uh, across the europe so and the main problems in ukrainian fintechs fitted when they enter like other markets they say they have lack of experience in pr and market and marketing and have to feed the customer needs um, so if you want to partner with Ukrainian fintechs and other markets, so it will be one of the questions you will need to think about. So uh, back to the technologies and trends that we have um, in fintechs that use in their like, uh, technology stack. So a lot of them, like 30% was focused to base the uh, products on API based technology, 9% use chatbots and 9% directly use artificial intelligence. And a lot of uh, startups thinking how they can use artificial intelligence or do some like MVP and tests. Uh, also was enough um, demand for cloud services, but I'll touch a little bit later the situation. So COVID, uh, as I mentioned, hit the market positively uh, in terms of 15% of market growth, 23% of increasing customer segment and increasing revenue. And uh, it's like um, finalize uh, our research of Ukrainian FinTech. You can find the FinTech ecosystem map and all the sub segments and logo of companies who work at the market. So as you can see, it's pretty developed in terms of numbers and different sub-segments market and ready to work and cooperate abroad. So you can uh, download the English or Ukrainian version of FinTech catalog uh, on our website, or you can use the QR as it, uh, you see it in your screens. So I will stay for a couple of seconds that you can download it, and then I can just back to challenges that we have at the moment and our thoughts how to help this industry to survive in this um, situation when uh, Russian uh, attack Ukraine and send missiles to civil um, society.
So 24th of February starting dramatically bad for Ukrainian people. So a lot of seas was heated by missiles and in a lot of infrastructure was destroyed during this 40 day of resist and uh, fighting for independence. I call it fight for you, maybe even EU independence that uh, we now have with Russians because it's not war for territory, it's war for, e, I think, ideological uh, things. And how it uh, touched the industry, how it touched the economy. So uh, Ukrainian fintech business change from business to resist. So uh, Ukrainian fintech company uh, was joined the activity, how they can do the resist of this inviters, uh, how they can help like people. Uh, so some of them like change and decrease to zero interchange commission, just support the payments. Uh, we see that a lot of people start to do like volunteer activities. Some of them go to the armies, like uh, volunteer. Uh, but back to economy, the war heated some sub segments, and some of one of, as I mentioned before, developed sub segment digital lending was destroyed because uh, people don't pay for credits, uh, lenders don't give money, and it's like very difficult question for the sub-segment. Some other sub-segments significantly declined. It's like Ecom, RegTech, and uh, we also see a huge outflow of employees uh, in different industries. So FinTech is one of these. So some of people go to army, some of them leave country as uh, refugees. Uh, some of people, most of people start to be internally displaced people in the Western part of Ukraine and some are killed by Russian aggression. So it's also, we see the significant decrease of demand from business side due to stress of economy and stop of some like industries and individual side because people in uncertainty stop, stop to spend their money and even the biggest uh, ecom provider Rosetka announced that they will just cut off 40% of the employees because uh, more than 100 times uh, decrease of business. And um, the last but not least, it's like damage of working and living infrastructure. A lot of people stay without offices and possibility to work um, and support their business processes. Uh, but now we try to find some like positive things that we could find in the situation we are and the trends we have before. This is like government goes digital and the government try to play important role uh, in fields of um, thinking and start building digital infrastructure for digital economies. So Ministry of Digital um, Infrastructure build uh, the state-owned application DIA. It's for remote identifications. It puts all government services via uh, this platform and even in, in war period they launch some like um, service called uh, Ye help it's something like that try to help some segments of people who are um, attacked by this situation so if back for some recent opportunities that we could find in the market so we are very thanks to Ukrainian government that they and the international partners that support us in this, that we not only fight with this Russian invasion, but we also think how we can uh, support the economy and Ukrainian parliament adopt a couple of legislation I want to mention. So it could be very attractive also for international partners to come and start and cooperate business in Ukraine is we adopt the law about the cloud technology. It was in some like uh, in all the legal framework in Ukraine. So now all this like cloud infrastructure and for work for government and financial sector are legalized. And 
uh, we know how cloud infrastructure and cloud technology are important for fintech industry and digital finance industry. So we see a huge potential in this. Ukraine, one of uh, not so many countries that adopt uh, digital assets law. It will give the start uh, of legal usage of uh, blockchain technology, uh, digital uh, assets, cryptocurrencies, etc. Uh, at the moment of our, we have very uh, attractive, let's call it, uh, tax amendments. So all companies that now will operate in Ukraine have pretty low tax uh, in terms of revenue and other things, and it will help to rebuild the infrastructure here in Ukraine. And also some liberalization of financial legislation that we can see that the National Bank of Ukraine to go forward to the industry and some even international and European, I think big startups uh, like PayPal, no, not PayPal, Revolut and Klarna start to work with Ukrainian customers and even the United States, PayPal uh, also um, uh, allowed Ukrainians to use their services. So um, as a good opportunity that we have, uh, it's very professional fintech teams in uh, our members and in fintech market. We know the right stack of technology that could at the moment uh, do some outsource contract or provide their products as white label to other markets because the business are stressed, so they have this capacity and they have this like proof track record. So we see it's like one of um, our main goal as association to help our members to uh, keep alive at the market as fintech uh, companies and find them more partners around the globe just uh, to uh, give them businesses and not make refugees uh, from them to other countries. Uh, so we see huge, I think even, we can't even uh, expect when it's happened that we'll have such uh, big support from our uh, partners, EU partners association. So many thanks to Bulgarian FinTech Association guys, you're amazing and for European Digital Finance Association that invite Ukrainian FinTech Association to be part of um, uh, their community. So even we're not EU country yet officially, yes, but uh, Ukrainian FinTech uh, now uh, start to be part of this European Digital Finance Association. Thanks for colleagues that helping us in this. And thank you, EU Commission, for your leadership in giving uh, such platform like this to show the potential and discuss the problems we have. Uh, we also see a huge deferred demand in digital finance solution in Ukraine after the war. So, and back as I mentioned to open banking legislation will be adopted in Ukraine. It's a huge, also big market for EU FinTech and digital finance startups to participate in rebuilding Ukrainian economy. So uh, open banking legislation uh, at the table, so uh, it will not shift it at the moment uh, dates of implementation we discussed with National Bank of Ukraine. So it's also um, huge potential to cooperate in Ukrainian market. So, and also rebuilding and building new infrastructure after the war, we think some of them should be differently uh, built in digital space and give more services for like people uh, in digital space, we see that uh, inviters can destroy the physical infrastructure, but it's very hard to destroy the uh, digital infrastructure. And thanks to the usage of digital tools, some of people could find uh, some like help services and access to finance. So uh, we call it Stand with Ukraine, and uh, I'll just want to share a couple next things that we want to focus and do in the nearest future. We discussed with colleague on European online fin and tech hackathon held Ukraine in uh, war uh, for independence. Uh, preliminary dates, it's like end of April, but we will announce it separately, and it will be like pan-European hackathon for solutions that could help uh, refugees, IDPs, and people to serve their needs. So we also invite um, 
international partners to that they can buy fintech products from Ukrainian fintechs and order some IT development in terms of fintech uh, from Ukrainian fintech startups. They have pretty strong, pretty strong uh, teams and competence. So Ukrainian fintech association uh, will help with all procurement and quality control. So we will dedicate a big part of our team to help in this coordination. So if, if you have any needs or you want to observe or find partner in Ukrainian fintech, so just don't hesitate 24 hours per day, you can contact Ukrainian association and we'll help you. And we also as association will focus our work on uh, find finding for projects that we think will help um, keep ecosystem still alive and build this like first level of uh, renewal the economy. So we will focus on matching platform for Ukrainian fintechs and contracts around the EU and the globe. So we start to do it manually, but we will think about some automatization. Uh, we want to build to physical space, like we call it fintech hub in Lviv and Kiev for startups that lose their offices and their like working infrastructure destroyed. Uh, we also uh, don't forget our, our about our social projects before the war, we have this FinTech labs at universities where we physically help students to teach new technology and contact with the industry. Now, due to situation, we want to build it fully digital and it will help bring new skills in education for students that will uh, tomorrow rebuild the economy and uh, do this like uh, new types of cooperation in the EU. So we also want to build job portal for skilled UR refugees who are at the moment not in Ukraine and IDPs that could work remotely in, in or in the EU physically if they are in the EU region. So we, we see a huge demand on this and we want to do it in correct, sustainable way. So the seat about um, how Ukraine fintechs like looks like and the challenges. You can use uh, our contacts to contact us if you have some question, or you could uh, use this QR to download FinTech catalog. So thank you for your attention to my presentation and we could back to our discussion. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Rostislav. Uh, we're really impressed by, uh, let's say, how much activity you're still keeping up uh, in, and how people are adjusting actually to the to the to this situation and the great difficulties which you which you're having. So I think uh, there will be many interesting questions this raises, but uh, but maybe we move first over to to Zarina, our second speaker, um, before we then open the floor. Um, Zarina Oznayeva, uh, you are indeed a project lead at the International Finance Corporation um, and you've been working with the Ukrainian fintech asset system for, for a long time. So the floor is yours uh, indeed to, to complement uh, uh, Rossi's word. There you go. Thank you, Jan. Uh, Jan, um, um, good uh, morning, good afternoon, colleagues. Um, first of all, um, I would like to say that um, our hearts and minds are with Ukraine this, all these days. And we, as IFC, as the World Bank Group, um, we, we stay committed uh, to provide the continuous support to our counterparts uh, in Ukraine, um, with whom we started to work approximately two and a half years ago, um, where we are glad to see that um, all our counterparts at government level, national bank, minister of digital transformation, at private level um, uh, and association, our uh, Ukraine FinTech Association, uh, Banking Association of Ukraine, you are keeping up uh, to work so hard in these uh, difficult days. And uh, oh, we um, uh, want to express again our wish to stay at your disposal for 24 by 7 um, nowadays uh, and uh, for all the future times uh, when we will need uh, uh, when you will need us um 
colleagues, uh, um, I think Rostislav uh, and Jan said a lot, um, and uh, you told about uh, the very uh, rapidly developing uh, the fintech industry in Ukraine uh, before the war started. And uh, um, you also, Rostislav, uh, told about uh, challenges, and um, we would like to. Fo I would like to focus uh, very briefly on opportunities. And you already mentioned one of uh, these opportunities, is uh, the open banking development. It's uh, one of the key instruments where we will continue to provide support uh, to the National Bank of Ukraine in developing the special standards to enforce all the statements of the loan financial services related to open banking um, uh, opportunities and products and services. And also, we will continue to work with association of uh, Ukraine fintechs in this direction and um, hope we will be able to provide um, uh, not only the advisory services, but also some um, support in building the special technological solutions to support all fintechs across Ukraine uh, and all the other uh, business and individual players uh, in using the benefits of this platform. Why we think it's so important to continue focusing on uh, digital development, on fintech development, because um, during the current war in Ukraine, the population in the country, including internally displaced people, refugees, rely, rely significantly on digital uh, tools, instruments to stay connected uh, to uh, the main infrastructure and uh, to uh, satisfy their basic needs. And um, as life already demonstrated how much the government and the private um, entities are doing now to maintain this digital infrastructure. And uh, um, that's why uh, all the reforms needed at the policy level um, and at level of infrastructure and at level of working with individual institutions, we uh, will continue and ready to support. I also want uh, colleagues to attract your attention about one of the key elements uh, which we consider now essential for sustainable for the sustainability of fintech industry development. Rastislav uh, told uh, that um, for now, before the war, 66% uh, of all investments were made from the personal funds to support the fintech industry. Only 2% were made uh, as angel investor um, like contribution uh, into the development of fintech industry. Venture funds are um, financed on the percent uh, of all fintech startups. Uh, in the meantime, uh, it, it was and we now think it's even the increasing demand uh, in access to equity financing uh, for further development of fintech industry, uh, which was expressed uh, also in uh, this catalog when 27% uh, of needed financing uh, was um, required uh, was wished to have from the venture funds and 18% from the uh, personal um, investment funds. And we as AFC are launching this new direction of work with um, Ukraine and all neighboring countries uh, to facilitate the better environment for venture um, capitalists also to um, develop, uh, to create uh, the appropriate legal regulatory framework to create the infrastructure and to what extent possibly to build these links uh, between the um, venture investors uh, and uh, fintechs and with a specific focus uh, on Ukraine. So that's why I think that for today's discussion it would be also very important to hear your voice colleagues uh, uh, where you see the opportunities for the investors to come, even in such a conflict and fragile situation. We, we as IFC, invested around uh, 600 million so, uh, in equity of um, fintechs across the world. But unfortunately, we still uh, stay um, not active uh, uh, on the investment side in Ukraine because we are just starting to liberate this market. Uh, but uh, we still hope that we will have a chance uh, to consider uh, the potential investments into uh, Ukraine fintechs inside Ukraine and outside Ukraine for those which are supporting uh, the uh, Ukraine refugees.
uh, and uh, the refugees access to markets and access to financial services. So, colleagues, I think we have uh, the huge work um, um, ahead of us. And uh, thank you, uh, Jan. Uh, thank you, Rostislav, that uh, you are uh, staying so much focused uh, in this regard. And all the colleagues attending today's uh, meeting, um, please uh, contact us uh, in case you may consider IFC as a reliable partner for your plans these days and restoring your business um, for the post-conflict times. Thank you, colleagues. Thank, yeah, you, thank very you very much. much. Sorry, Rastila, please go ahead. I'll just say thank you very much, Zarina, for such also warm roles and su continue supporting Ukrainian digital finance and fintech ecosystem. No, indeed, thank, thank, thanks, thanks very much. I could just uh, agree on that. Very, very nice and good the work which you uh, the work you were doing there so um yes uh, indeed i think uh, this, this has given us now a kind of a good overview both of the opportunities and also the long term perspective and it's it's encouraging to see how much you also have your kind of uh, uh, your um how do you say your uh, you stay focused on the future as well which is uh, not always easy i think in these uh, in these circumstances um so I think this would now give the uh, opportunity for to all participants to um, um, speak up if they have any questions or, or, or comments to make. What I would suggest is that indeed, uh, if you have any questions, uh, you uh, post this in the chat, um, and um, and we can then uh, actually give you the uh, the floor, and then you can speak up and 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 uh, post your question or or give your remark as well. So please, I suggest any any questions or comments. If you want to take the floor, please, uh, for all uh, participants, actually, the floor is open. Uh, please uh, indicate in the chat uh, that you want to um, uh, you want to speak, and uh, we would then uh, actually give the floor. Um, I would maybe while while um, uh, partic uh, our participants uh, can can consider uh, coming in. I would maybe start off with the first uh, couple of questions which I which I had. Um, so I think uh, the first one is really on the on the current situation. I think uh, how is the situation in terms of the very basic uh, infrastructure uh, connection? I, I heard that actually people are working day and night to maintain actually internet uh, uh, connection, which of course is essential for for any digital fire work, whether that's fines or not. Um, so I would, was interested to to see how the how the situation is uh, on this and how um, actually uh, colleagues are man managing to keep up with that. Um, and then if, I would have maybe a second question, uh, uh, which uh, would be more also about uh, your indeed encouragement for, for cooperation with uh, partners from EU member states, also uh, uh, companies and projects. So maybe you could, uh, Ostislav, you could uh, elaborate a bit more what are really, you mentioned in the beginning, uh, the, the fintechs which are active in the Ukraine and then indeed uh, also, the, the the share of uh, fintechs which are actually uh, co uh, active abroad. Uh, maybe if you could uh, uh, say a bit more on what are actually the the areas, or give some examples on projects where indeed Ukrainian fintechs have already in the past been cooperating or doing work actually for uh, for companies in uh, in the EU. Um, just to give a bit more illustrate also for participants a bit more what are possible areas of uh, of cooperation and possible projects. Okay. Thank you very much for your question. I'll start for this you mentioned for infrastructure. It was my personal fears after the bombing that we will lose the internet and now everything is in the internet. So, but uh, our internet providers, our telco providers do uh, a lot of job to keep the connection stable. And even now we can, you know, use this internet connection to have this presentation so uh, in some areas it was dropped to the physical destroy of all this like uh, cells that give the signal but uh, it was interesting story behind when our vice prime minister write uh, the post to elon musk and he was immediately response Uh, 
I think talking about internet connection, we lost the connection. I'm sure that uh, Rostislav is uh, is working on uh, restoring it. <clears throat> I don't so, know. Do you hear me? Yes, we, we missed you. Uh, you mentioned Elon Musk and then uh, you were gone. Okay, sorry. So I just mentioned that can, we have a good connection, uses 40 days and connection was dropped. Okay. Uh, so uh, connection was stable thanks to providers and also it was cooperation with our government and Elon Musk. So they bring uh, numbers of this Starlink station to give the internet for some villages which was destroyed and some territory under attack. So it's due to infrastructure. Second level of infrastructure is banking system and work of National Bank of Ukraine. They do amazing job in terms of uh, decrease the panic. Uh, to support liquidity of banks and all payments are going immediately. We don't have any queue and, or some delays. So it's amazing job. And I know that colleagues in National Bank of Ukraine work without any vacation, etc. Uh, so third one, it's a cooperation of international payment systems. So Visa and MasterCard cancel interchange commission for this period for Ukrainian market and also some banks, but most banks support this activity. So to promote um, cashless payments, because there are some problem in cash uh, delivery in terms of war. So cashless payment uh, play a good uh, play a good service for Ukrainian economy and I think the government will continue to develop uh, this cashless strategy and back to the potential opportunity and um, cases that we have already so we have a lot of cases if anybody interesting could contact us we will just go in details but just uh, what I want to mention so huge case what I see at the market at the moment so digital lending is destroyed uh, due to war but it's huge window of opportunity for provide credits to private individuals who try to operate in uh, western part of ukraine to some people who are idps in this western part of ukraine and we have providers that have the right infrastructure but they have a lack access to finance so if, if it will be some funds that want to make business with them we can connect with providers who have the right infrastructure who have the right like scoring system etc so this is like one case another case as i mentioned in the beginning so now banks are booming around the globe and in europe specifically so ukraine are also pretty good in this so we have more than five now banks operating in our country and the numbers are growing and uh, we do some like research and we find that uh, number of money to start the neo bank in ukraine are pretty cheaper than you can do it in the other part of the world sometimes like 10 times so and functionality pretty the same so it's a huge potential even one of our neo banks was the most growing neo banks in, in europe two years ago so ukrainian monobank was the faster growing neo bank in europe so now they have i think before the war they have like five million people uh, clients so it's pretty big numbers for such um, young industry and um, Ukrainian payments providers uh, have a lot of um, experience to adopt new technology of international payment corporation. So we have lack of uh, physical infrastructure in a uh, couple of years ago. That's why it was uh, very good of adoption, new technology and new payment technology from international payment uh, providers and solutions. That's why Ukrainian payments do the sleep frog. 
Uh, we, as I mentioned, we have strong mathematics um, schools in Ukraine, so we have good data science and scoring and risk management teams that could help um, to cooperate uh, in these terms. Uh, we have strong blockchain communities that know how to deal blockchain and cryptocurrency projects. So we have a lot of cases. So it's like a couple examples that I want to mention, but if you go to some details, I think you could find much more examples uh, for this. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and then I, I, I see indeed in the in the Q&A, I think a number of participants actually uh, uh, providing their greetings and and uh, and support as well. I think maybe also the suggestion to put uh, again on the on the screen the QR code. Uh, maybe we can yeah, do it at the end of the seminar. Um, and then I think we have a question from Balash uh, Faluvegi. Um, Balash, I will I will uh, unmute unmute you now. So if you want, you can come in and uh, ask your question directly. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, express our, our uh, support to everyone in, in, in Ukraine and uh, would like to, to let you know that uh, uh, despite some, some differences, some, some um, uh, problems from our government, uh, uh, almost everyone I know here in Hungary uh, support Ukraine and uh, we hope that uh, this horrible situation will will end uh, as soon as possible. Uh, I have actually uh, two two set of questions. Uh, the first one is about uh, um, the refugees from the industry. So many people here uh, uh, came to also here in Hungary, but uh, even more to to Poland, for example, or or probably Romania. But uh, I think everyone is interested in in the EU. Is how can we help uh, people from the industry? So we we help uh, people regularly here, uh, refugees with uh, uh, with food, with with shelter. Even one, one of my son's uh, classmate is uh, is a, a Ukrainian girl from near Kiev. So we we support them as much as possible. But uh, my question is about uh, specifically about the people in the industry. Uh, do you have any data on uh, how many people from fintech uh, came to Hungary? And is there a way to contact them, to work together with them, to help them? So this is my first question. And the second one is that uh, given the high concentration of fintechs in Kiev, uh, um, how, do, do you have any estimate on how much the revenue changed uh, for, for fintechs in, in Ukraine uh, in March, if, if you have any kind of data or estimate? And uh, given the fact that uh, your government responded very flexible uh, for for fintechs, uh, for example, the the, the cryptocurrency law or the other other uh, policies you mentioned, uh, do you have uh, any estimate on how much uh, the revenue or or any other uh, KPI will change this year? Even is there a room for even an improvement? So this horrible situation maybe even can can be used uh, as uh, not only rebuilding but building something new, building something. Uh, uh, even even better. So, do you have any any kind of estimate about this? So that's that's the two questions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Balash. Thank you for warm words. Thank you for your support in Ukrainians, not only Ukrainian fintech. Uh, so back to your question. We have preliminary numbers of uh, how many Ukrainian refugees in what in different countries. So, but ma mainly it's like women and children. So, because a male can't leave the border. And if you back to IT industry, it's like, um, it's a man world, so, you know, 90% of um, fintechs and IT companies, it's male. So they can't leave the country due to the war situation. So uh, they mostly IDPs, not refugees. And uh, I think Kiev, leave more than half companies move to western part of ukraine we do two research during the march uh, how this company feels and the numbers and the expectation so it's look like due to huge stress everybody have in personal and business level the drop of uh, revenue was like around 80 percent 
but it was a uh, reflection to a shock they have. So uh, the second wave of research we do a couple of days ago shows that uh, they start to find the workarounds, they start to find some like niche, they try to adopt the products. So the number of revenue not will be so dramatically decrease in terms of year numbers. The answer how it will correlate the plans for the year, it will answer when the war will finish because it's still keeping in some region, especially in Donetsk, Lugansk, Kherson and Zaporizhia districts, the station are pretty hot. Uh, so uh, back to number of male programmers uh, in EU, it's hard to answer. So some guys who was in like business trip, they stuck in some like Poland or, you know, in Holland and some other EU countries. And most of them now focuses in some volunteer activity, as we know, <clears throat> and coordinate with EU colleagues to help uh, refugees. Back to refugees, uh, it's a lot of initiatives at the market, uh, but it's make a um, problem of choice. So we think and we discuss with uh, World Bank Group, uh, I see that maybe we should step in this market and help with some aggregation and help with some like, let's call it aggregation provider of this product and services for refugees collect the information and maybe in API based um, level collect your products in your country that could serve refugee in your country. And it will help also um, to build this and keep this digital finance culture uh, in our refugees. And uh, sorry, what was the third question? Because I, I think I could miss it. So, well, actually that, that was uh, two, two kind of two sets of questions. So about uh, first about the the refugees from 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 the industry, and the second was about uh, how, how the revenue changed, and uh, is there an improvement of uh, uh, maybe a room for improvement of uh, of revenues and other other KPIs because of the flexible policies you yeah. you, you just uh, you just launched your government launched. Yeah, thank you. So uh, yes, uh, so the second wave of research that we do a couple of days ago shows that these companies that exist and stay at the market, 90% uh, of them say that they will continue business in Ukraine after the war. So um, uh, we have an internal joke. So we should keep the good uh, sense of humor. Otherwise, it's hard to alive in this situation. We say that Ukrainian fintech will be very popular in Europe in terms of their anti-fragility. So if, if they go through the war and keep alive, so they can still operate a normal business. Uh, we hope that we will keep more than 85% of all companies that we have at the market. So it's our like internal and expert research. So uh, as soon as the war will finish quickly, small number of the companies that will stay at the market. And another big question, how will the renewal of economy will looks like? We understand it's a huge need to rebuild the physical infrastructure, but we also want to uh, make focus on rebuilding digital infrastructure. And maybe it's not only like rebuilding uh, of such kind of help, but we look for this uh, and ask colleagues and partners to look like such kind of investment for new type of economy that you can participate uh, with Ukrainian country. Yeah. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Nidros Silas. I, I think uh, our time is actually has slowly come to an end uh, uh, for the webinar. So uh, indeed, thank you very much uh, again, uh, uh, Rostislav and um, Zarina for the presentations. Uh, maybe you want to put up again now the QR code actually, so that uh, if uh, participants still want to actually um, yes, I'll back to use that exactly for the contact. So, I also had posted your email uh, uh, address again in the chat for everybody. Um, so 
Uh, yes, I think uh, this concludes our, our webinar. On our side, we will also indeed, uh, let's say, make the webinar, which has been uh, uh, recorded, will make it available also on our digital finance uh, platform and also uh, uh, add a reference indeed to, to your, uh, your FinTech catalog. So uh, there will also be via the digital finance platform the possibility actually to be in touch. Um, and indeed, uh, we are also uh, considering on our side how to further support the various uh, the activities which you uh, which you are up to so i think it's really important and encouraging to uh, to 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 help you with this uh, with this work so i would like to thank you again and uh, we wish you really good luck uh, well above all personally for you and your family uh, but also for the further work uh, now in these difficult circumstances and we hope that uh, in the not too distant future we can discuss these things without the shadow of a war over over us thank you very much Rostislav, and uh, and all the best Thank you very much and thank you for this opportunity to communicate about Ukrainian fintech uh, ecosystem looks like. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.